the way from high school, and I was all of 195 pounds or 200 pounds, and um, uh, it, that was a special time. And, and if you put my first year and you put my very last year in New York, there hasn't been many peaks and valleys. Um, I had the greatest year uh, of my career in 2007, and, and it's a year that I'm very proud of. Although we, you know, we didn't win our championship, it was a year that w was was full of. Um, you know, it was, it was a very historic year to to have 2007, 1996. Uh, that that for me says a lot. How much of the culture? How prevalent? was this culture in Texas at that time? You know, I, I've always been a guy that raises my own race, and, and I don't like to look left, I don't look right. You just feel there's an energy. Uh, you know, to say it's only Texas, that, that wouldn't be fair. But overall, you felt that there was a, I, I felt a tremendous pressure to play and play really well. I felt like I was going up against the whole world. I just signed this enormous contract. I got unbelievable, uh, uh, negative press, for lack of a better term, for you know Tom Hicks and I teaming up together. And, and, and we were all bad at the time. So I felt like I needed uh, something, a push, without over-investigating what I was taking, to get me to the next level. How long was it before you found out that what you were doing was actually illegal? Um, again, at the time of, of that culture, there was no illegal or legal. It, it, it was just you have to understand the time and to take you back there is, again, people were taking a number of different things uh, from GNC to what, whatever. Um, to be quite honest with you, <laughs> uh, the first time that I, that I, I, I knew that I had failed a test 100% was when uh, this, the, the lady from Sports Illustrated uh, came into my gym just a few days ago and and told me you had fa you you have failed the test. So Gene Orsi didn't tell you that in because in the Mitchell report it says that he told all the players who failed drug tests in 2003. Gene was very specific in 2004. We had a meeting in September um, or August. No, don't quote me the date, but uh, he said there's a government list. There's 104 players in it. You might or might not have tested positive. Um, at that point, I said, okay, that was five years ago. I never heard any, anything ever since. In my mind, I assumed that, okay, wh whatever I was experimenting with in Texas, perhaps was okay, I'm, I'm okay. And in my mind, as I, as I did my interview with CBS last year, I felt I haven't failed a test. I, have, I haven't done a steroid. And, and that was my belief, whether I wanted to convince myself of that or that, that's, that's just where my mind was. I felt that it was important for me that all my years in New York have been, uh, have been clean, and I wanted just to move to the next chapter of my life. Because ESPN surveyed a number of doctors and experts in this field, and they said that the uh, Primo Bolin could never be prescribed by a doctor, mm -hmm. but that was, it was accessible? Whatever, um, first of all, I want to see these tests, because I, I haven't seen them, in fairness to me. Um, I am saying I was, I was, I'm guilty of being naive, and and not having all the information and, and being negligent, but I would love to see the test before I start answering questions that that I don't. I've never even heard this word, but probably yesterday for the first time. So again, I, I am guilty of being very naive, and, and I'm deeply sorry for for that. Now, you mentioned the Katie Couric interview. You did say. Uh, he, you were asked if you would ever use steroids, human growth hormone, or other performance enhancing substances, and you said no, flat out no. Mm -hmm. For the record, have you ever used steroids, human growth hormone, or any other performance enhancing substance? No. Have you ever been tempted to use any of those things? No. You never felt like this guy's doing it, maybe I should look into this too. He's getting better numbers, playing better ball. I've never felt overmatched on the baseball field. I've always been in a very strong, dominant position. And I felt that if I did my, my work, since I've done, since I was uh, you know, a rookie back in Seattle, I, I didn't have a problem competing at, at any level. In your mind, that, that wasn't a lie? You know, at the time, Peter, I, I wasn't even being truthful with myself. How am I gonna be truthful with Katie or CBS? Um, today, I'm here to say the truth. And I feel good about that. And I think my fans deserve that. 
and, and I'm ready to put everything behind me and go play baseball. And, and you know, we have a great team this year. I couldn't be more excited about the guys that we've brought in and Mark Teixeira and AJ Burnett and, and Cesar Sabathia. And, and I think it's, it's an important time in my life to turn the page and, and focus on what's, what's next. So from 2004 on, you have been completely clean? Yes. Have you even been able to, to check and find out how many times you've been tested? <laughs> I, you know, Peter, I, I don't know the, 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 the real number, but I would guess at least eight to ten times. Um, but I would like to know that number because I, I know I got, I've gotten tested quite a bit over the last five years. And you were tested with blood tests during the w, WBC in 2006, is that correct? Correct. I got tested in 2006 and also this year um, when I go down to Puerto Rico, I'm sure we're going to start getting tested again in 2009. And remember, prior to, to Texas, not only did I really had, at that time, in, in Seattle, I ain't never even heard of a player uh, taking a substance, uh, you know, a steroid of any kind in my Seattle days. Um, I mean, I know this, this, this lady from Sports Illustrated, Serena Roberts, is, is trying to throw things out there that I, in high school, I tried steroid. I mean, that's the biggest bunch of baloney I've ever heard in my life. And I mean, what what makes me upset is and and that Sports Illustrated pays this lady, Selena Roberts, to stalk me. I mean, this lady's been thrown out of my apartment in New York City. This lady has five days ago just been thrown out of the University of Miami police for trespassing. And four days ago, she tried to break into my house while my girl, girls are up there sleeping and got cited by the Miami Beach police. I have the paper here. And this lady's coming out with all these allegations, all these lies, because she's writing an article for Sports Illustrated, and she's coming out with a book in May. And really respectable journalists are following this lady off the cliff and following her lead. And that, to me, is, is, is unfortunate. And uh, How do you go about making people believe you? Well, a few things. I mean, I think coming into the league at 20 years old and, and, and coming second to Juan Gonzalez in the MVP is, is one good indication. And then, you know, 14 years later in 2007, having the greatest year of my career is another. The other thing is I'm going to have a sample 14 years past this Texas era where I get to show and prove to the world, you know, who I am as a player. Uh, hopefully I'm part of a, a championship team or two. And, uh, and I also, more importantly, have a chance to, you know, tell the, the story to kids so they can learn from my mistake, because there's a story to be, be, be said here. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to that challenge. But to me, uh, 09, uh, now I'm getting excited to sh go into spring training. When you take this gorilla and this monkey off your back, you realize that honesty is the only way. Uh, I'm finally beginning to grow up, and I I'm pretty tired of being stupid and, and selfish. And, and you know about myself when the truth needs to needed to come out a long time ago I'm glad it's coming out today two years ago when Barry Bonds was passing Henry Aaron it was written in a lot of places well the great thing about when you pass Bonds the great thing will be we'll finally have a, a legitimate home run champion when you read those articles did they did that did you worry a little bit about all this coming back to haunt you? You naturally have to worry. I mean, again, there's such a gray area. That, that era wasn't about facts. That era, I mean, it, those words you just mentioned, I guarantee that half the guys that did that in any sport don't know what that is. You, you basically uh, end up trusting the wrong people. You end up, uh, you know, not being very careful about what you're ingesting. And yeah, it, it worried me completely, absolutely. And, and today, although I know that people are going to be very disappointed, just like I am, um, I feel good about moving forward and doing things the way I've been doing it the last five years and the way I did it prior to being in Texas. And, and that's a very important point for me. Now, a lot has been said about the fact that the union did not get those, those, uh, those samples destroyed.